Gene drives are a novel intervention mm. that um, certainly has a lot of potential. There's still a long way to go. There's quite a bit of research that needs to be done to understand the potential impact. But I think the technology itself is very powerful. And I think therein lies some of the risk. And of the gene drive systems, there's sort of low threshold gene drives and high threshold gene drives. So with high threshold gene drives, you need a large number of mosquitoes released into the wild to have the impact. Mm. And then with low threshold gene drives, you need a few mosquitoes to be released into the wild and really propagates itself. And then within those, you have some gene drive that help that once introduced will suppress the population of mosquitoes or insects. And then you have some gene drives that will modify elements within the mosquito or the insect to cause it to not be as efficient or not able to perpetuate a particular attribute. I guess the question that we will all have, and you know, we see this you know, in NETS and we see it in some of the other tools is, what will be the acceptance of national governments or communities hmm. to a technology that can be complex to understand? The minute you get into genetically modified technology, it raises eyebrows and you have adopters, but you'll also have the skeptics. And I think that's one thing Target Malaria is conscious of, and they've spent a huge amount of time working with communities, working with members of parliament in some of these countries to understand what the legislative framework is and what kind of information the decision makers require for a policy to be adopted yeah. in terms of gene drive mosquitoes or gene drive insects in general. Now, with this type of technology, you can't simply say I'm releasing it in one country and it's not going to spread to the next country. So not only do you need a country adoption, you probably need regional adoption. And that requires you to also be able to engage with all these communities. This is mm. a really powerful tool, but mm. I think in its power lies some of its risk. And I think you have then the question, how do you turn it off? Either when you don't need it any longer, or as we know, with catastrophic risks yeah. in the future, something goes wrong and we don't expect it to, but if it does cross over into other insects unintentionally, mm. how do you turn it off? 